so hello and welcome to Econ 311, which is Microeconomics 1. Um, basically, for this course, you know that you should have some prerequisites in elements of economics, which is microeconomics. So in your elements of economics course, which was at level 200, you have some foundation, which is quite important for this course. So for this, I will introduce you to key microeconomic concepts. The beginning, which is section one, will look at consumer behavior, right? So with consumer behavior, we'll be looking at schools of thought in terms of different propositions that have been made in discussing the consumer behavior. That is how consumer behaves. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. So this section begins with an outline of the basic assumptions underlying the consumer behavior. And for this, we'll be concentrating on the cardinalist concept of consumer behavior. And we'll look at how equilibrium is attained. And the section will conclude by criticisms of the cardinal utility approach. So in terms of the section outline, I'll be looking at the cardinal utility approach to demand, the relationship that exists between total utility and marginal utility, consumer equilibrium, derivation of Marshall's law of demand, and then we'll discuss the criticisms of the demand care. In terms of the outline, as you can see, I will not belabor the point by going through all that, but after going through the section, you would have a working knowledge of what the cardinal utility approach to the theory of demand is. For the reading list, you are required to read chapter four of variant, which is intermediate micro. So in terms of the cardinal utility approach to demand, we know that the cardinalists, in going behind the theory of demand, try to explain why people behave the way they do. That is, why do you buy more of a product when the product becomes cheaper, or you buy less when it becomes expensive? That is, with an increase in price. And according to the cardinalists, they believe that utility is measurable. And what is this utility? It is a total satisfaction you derive from the consumption of a good, right? So according to the cardinalists, once you consume a good, you can tell us that you derive a certain quantum of satisfaction from the consumption of that good. And before we go on, we would have to look at who the consumer is, who is the individual that is utilizing the product. In terms of utility, I have mentioned the measurement of utility, um, which is how do people measure their utility. The cardinalists propose that utility is measured in utils. We'll discuss that as to how this comes about. And then we'll look at total utility, marginal utility, and the law of diminishing returns. So in terms of the measurability of utility, as indicated earlier, the cardinalists believe that you can measure utility in utils, just like weight, volume, utility can be given a quantitative measure. So if you consume a bowl of rice compared to a bowl of kinke, you can tell us that you derive 10 utils from rice and you derive eight utils from kinke. That will give us an indication that your satisfaction is highest in terms of rice compared to kinke, right? But the question is, what is this measure, this utils measure? It has been questioned and the best the cardinalists proposed was that the utils could be compared to the price you are willing to pay for that commodity. So in terms of total utility, we are looking at the total satisfaction you get from consuming a good, right? And this is additive. So the more you consume, the higher your satisfaction in terms of total utility. But when it comes to marginal utility, we are looking at the change in your total utility as a result of a change in your consumption. That is the additional satisfaction you get from consuming additional units of a good. That is what 
marginal utility basically is. So when you look at marginal utility, um, it works by utilizing the concept of um, diminishing marginal utility in that when you consume a product, your satisfaction declines as you consume more of that product, right? So there is this idea that the more you have, the lesser you, the premium you place on that commodity. So when you look at this table, you can see that when the consumer has one unit of this commodity, total utility is 10, marginal utility is 10. But when they have two units, you see that total utility increases to 18, but marginal utility is the difference, which is 18 minus 10, which is 8. So when you go on, you see that total utility is adding on while marginal utility declines with further consumption of the good. So from that table, if you plot the marginal utility and total utility curves, this is what you get. You see that the total utility curve um, slopes upwards, although the slope changes, right? Marginal utility curve is the slope of this total utility curve. So you see the peak of this slope is at the beginning of the curve, which is between points A and B. So at that point, marginal utility is highest, which is at 10. When the consumer consumes the second unit, we know total utility was what, 18. Marginal utility is what, 8. So when you plot this, this gives you your marginal utility curve out of the total utility curve. So the point you need to note here is that the marginal utility curve, which is the slope of the total utility curve, is derived from it. Right. So in terms of the law of diminishing marginal utility, it states that the more of a commodity you consume, in terms of the additions to total utility, the more your satisfaction declines, right? So when you have consumed um, a plate of rice, the first plate gives you a higher satisfaction. When you are given a second plate, your satisfaction for the second will be less than the first. That is basically what diminishing marginal utility postulates. So when you look at this, this utility function is a function for a typical consumer who is consuming goods X1, X2, up to the Xn commodity. In terms of the total utility function, I pointed out that it is additive. So we will add your utility for consuming X1 utility for X2, for X3, up to the X nth commodity, and that gives you your total utility for consumption. When it comes to marginal utility, it will be the change in total utility as a result of a change in the consumption of the good. So um, that gives us our marginal utility. How then does the consumer get to equilibrium? As I pointed out, utils, we equate, cardinalists propose that we can equate utils to the price you are willing to pay. So the consumer, the rational consumer will consume to the point where the price they are paying for the commodity is equal to the additional satisfaction they derive from the commodity, right? So that means that MUX would be equal to the price of X or MUX is equal to Lambda PX, where lambda is basically the utility of money, which is here we assume to be constant. So in a scenario where the consumer is not in equilibrium, it means that there is a disequilibrium between marginal utility and price. So this consumer would have to realign consumption. So in a scenario where MUS is less than price, the consumer would have to decrease consumption of X so that marginal utility will increase based on the law of diminishing marginal returns to equate price to MUX. On the other hand, when MUX is greater than PX, it means that the consumer would have to increase consumption of X to, e to decrease marginal utility so that equilibrium is established, right? So 
Um, in a two commodity case where the consumer is consuming goods X and Y, the ratio of the marginal utility to the price of X would have to be equated to the ratio of the marginal utility of good Y to the price of good Y, right? So um, this is also the same scenario when the consumer is consuming nth commodity. This ratio for every commodity would have to be equated for the consumer to be in equilibrium. So based on all these that I have discussed, how do we derive the demand curve for the consumer. The demand care for the consumer, we know from this discussion, would be the positive segment of the marginal utility care. The positive segment of the marginal utility care. Why? Because no rational consumer will consume a good to the point where additional utility is zero. Remember, you are not getting the good for free. You are paying for it. So the rational consumer will consume to the point where at least there is some positive marginal utility. And when you equate the marginal utility to the price, the quantities that the individual consume, we can plot the price against that quantity to get the demand curve. So here, we see that when the price is at P1, marginal utility is at MU1. Quantity consumed is at X1. Similarly, when the price drops to P3, we see marginal utility drops to P3 because the consumer will be consuming more of the good, which is X3. So on the demand curve, we will plot X against P, and this gives us our typical downward sloping demand curve. Right. So um, what are the criticisms of this cardinal utility approach? The main criticisms have been that the measurability of utility is unrealistic. I mean, if somebody can tell you that you can actually place a number on the satisfaction you get from a good, it is quite questionable and it's very subjective. So that is um, the key criticism. And also the constant utility of money. We know that money, the value of money is different for different people, right? Rich people will not place too much value on a 10 Ghana CD note compared to a poor person. So money is not the same for everybody. And the demand curve is also derived based on the ceteris paribus assumption, which ignores the income and substitution effect of um, a price change, right? And um, lastly, there is lack of empirical evidence to support the diminishing marginal utility assumption. So um, in terms of um, this section, I will end this section by asking you to explain the law of diminishing marginal utility and derive the demand care for a commodity based on this law. Thank you and all the best reviewing this section. Good luck.